Hello everyone, welcome back to The Plunder Den. In this week's episode, we're going to do a building and painting tutorial of a destroyed building for that Blood and Valor uh, battle map I've been talking about. So remember I kind of was talking about doing this Crash Zeppelin project where I had a bunch of destroyed buildings and a stone bridge? Well, in the last episode, we, we, did, we took care of the stone bridge, uh, but uh, I decided in this episode I would do a destroyed building. So I certainly used a lot of different materials uh, that I've never used before to start creating this. Uh, and really I only have the bottom half of it done and that's what we're going to do in this video. This may be a two-parter, hopefully not a third-parter, but it might, it might have to be go to a third part. Uh, depending on uh, how much I can get done in a complete week for you guys. Um, so Blood and Valor uh, is another game produced by uh, Firelock Games. And it is a... It's a skirmish style, similar to Blood and Plunder, uh, but it's set in the uh, Great War, so the World War I uh, kind of skirmish style game, which is really, really cool. It's a, uh, it's a, you know, there's not a whole lot of World War I games out there, um, so this is a, a really cool game to dwell in, uh, and uh, so I wanted to build some dedicated terrain for that. Now, of course, knowing me, I, I like to make things that are, uh, you know, usable in other other games, and so I kind of decide to go a little bit on the Tudor style building so it could be maybe something for Dungeons and Dragons it could be used for some other kind of uh, game system um, uh, in that uh, uh, that kind of same vein uh, with CD Tudor style uh, building so let's take a look at what I've done here so far so this is just the bottom of the building that we're going to be doing so the reason why I painted it already, you can see the base has not really been anything done with it, but uh, the building has been painted on the bottom, uh, is uh, because I have to build a second floor, uh, of course I, I would have to paint the bottom first uh, and before I start putting things on top. It'll be too hard to paint afterwards. So let's just get a good close look at that. Uh, you can see I got some painted miniatures and partially painted miniatures. <laughs> Uh, but uh, I'm hoping to get uh, those uh, four, that four unit all painted up uh, before we finish this as well. So just giving you an overall view of kind of what we're going to be building in this video. So we kind of cover, I uh, made this broken glass, I've never done that before. Uh, I use a lot of balsa wood, I've never done that as well, so there's a lot more wood in this. There's a wood floor instead of a foam floor. Uh, so there's a lot of other materials that I've never used before. Uh, and actually, uh, I'm really happy how this uh, this turned out, and, and I can't wait to get up to the second floor. I made some twisted floorboards and uh, really uh, take this building to the, uh, the next level. And then for this base, I was kind of thinking maybe making a pile of rubble here. Uh, a lot of uh, buildings that were destroyed during the, uh, the war, they would pull out uh, all the remnants of the garbage or things that have fallen down from and kind of stack it beside the building or put it onto the road. Uh, that way they can uh, clear these buildings out and, and either repair them or reuse them. So I uh, kind of want to capture that in this, uh, in this, uh, in this uh, terrain piece. Uh, so it's going to be kind of a, have like a pathway in here, some rubble in here. Uh, and then of course it'll have a roof uh, with a destroyed uh, roof on top and a second floor here. So that, was, that was, is what I'm planning on building in the second video. But in this video we're going to cover this uh, bottom half of the building. The building construction of it and the painting of it. All right. So if you guys like what we're doing here in the Planet End, make sure you uh, smash that like button and consider subscribing to the Planet End and get first-hand information of when I start these projects. So let's get down to the table. Let's start building and let's start painting. Okay, so this is pretty much how I started. I uh, cut out a bunch of dollar store foam board and uh, insulation foam. Uh, just showing you, I did cut out the roof pieces and mainly I did that uh, just to measure out the whole uh, structure and what it's gonna look like when it's completed. Um, and then I cut uh, a square piece of insulation foam and you can see the a chimney piece. So I'm just measuring this on there to make sure uh, it fits. I kind of wanted to leave that one pathway on the side of the building for, uh, um, some uh, rubble and stuff I plan on putting there. So I texturalized the whole thing with a foam ball and I'm just showing you that chimney I mentioned that cut out of insulation foam. Uh, of course, gonna need lots of matchsticks for this project. 
uh, and my I'm gonna show you my big bag of uh, <laughs> wood I use, popsicle sticks, little square pieces. There's all sorts of different types of wood pieces in there. I actually have a couple of bags of that uh, just accumulate over projects. And then some balsa wood, which I've never actually used before uh, and I plan to use in this project. So then I moved on to uh, showing, uh, gluing some of the matchsticks and framing out the windows. And I did this in that Tudor style building before. But what I did different in this one is I actually cut the whole square out and I just went with the uh, matchsticks. In the Tudor style, I kind of left some of the foam in there and glued that on there. Uh, and I, I realized that maybe I should just frame it out and decided to, uh, I didn't want to leave the foam in there. Plus I plan on adding some uh, damaged like glass and stuff in there. So... So I'm just showing you kind of uh, what I did. I framed up the windows first, and then I plan on doing an outer around uh, uh, frame as well. So there'll be two frames in, within each other because I plan on slipping that plastic through the middle. So I'm just showing you that plastic. So essentially, that's just uh, plastic you find on packaging. I actually got this from a package of tea lights, actually. <laughs> it was in clear plastic that I bought from Walmart. And I just took the plastic from it. It worked out great for this glass. I just cut it in little shapes. I uh, put some bullet holes in there and uh, just kind of uh, scratched it up to look like it's cracked. So then I'm going to put a little foam divider uh, between um, the window and the base because I plan on putting bricks. And I've shown this technique before. Uh, I've tumbled bricks and rocks and uh, I did that in the previous in the bridge one. Uh, in the bridge tutorial, just showing you I'm gluing the bricks on the bottom. So I kind of built these pieces separately before I glued them onto the base. So this is completed. Uh, I did uh, put some wash on the framing of the windows, uh, just kind of to darken them up a little bit. Well, um, I, unfortunately, at first when I put the glass in first and then realized it, but it doesn't matter. It looks like it's damaged and old in any ways. This is a damaged building. So now I used my trusty little dowel and uh, carved out the texture onto the chimney, uh, similar to that roadway I did on the uh, bridge. So then I cut a hole in the bottom and into the wall uh, because I plan on having a chimney inside. Uh, so because this damaged building is open on the back, uh, I have to do the interior and exterior of this building. So a little more uh, complicated than the Tudor style and uh, a little more to account for. So I definitely wanted to add a chimney in there. All right, so this is, I framed it out with some uh, um, some wood, and that uh, balsa wood, and then I put some uh, bricks on there um, and kind of made a little cradle for uh, that you would put the logs on. So I'm just showing you kind of all the pieces. I, I can finish completing the framing out of that second window, uh, and I've already showed you that piece. So these are all the pieces that are completed. So essentially these are the three main walls that are still somewhat fully intact. Uh, and I'll be holding up most of the structure. Uh, I plan on having it damaged behind the back of the building, um, which will be different pieces. So then I use my hot glue gun. Uh, really, when I'm setting pieces like this on the foam, uh, I rather have a, something fast to glue it together. So I usually just use hot glue and put it together that way. Um, you could use uh, white glue, but it, it takes a little longer to dry. It's a little harder to keep everything straight. If you hot glue it, you can kind of keep it in that way. So I left that place open in the middle there uh, because I plan on adding a doorway. So yeah, I've cut out a piece of dollar store foam board. Uh, and, and instead of making a foam door this time, I used that balsa wood uh, in some uh, just small popsicle stick pieces and kind of made a, a door out of that. I uh, just glued it together with white glue um, and just wanted to add a little more extra to my door using real wood this time. So then I use some more of that balsa wood. I plan on putting those in the corners uh, as posts uh, inside the interior. And I did a post across. <laughs> There's my little saw piece that I've used in previous videos. Actually, it was very easy to cut this balsa wood. So uh, I actually, it was really simple. A lot, of, a lot easier than cutting dowels and other things. So I'm just showing you I'm planning on framing out the floor with those uh, matchsticks. Just kind of giving it like kind of like a molding along the floor. <clears throat> and then I'm just showing you, I'm planning on putting a post in the center. Uh, uh, another balsa uh, wood post. So these are the, the back. I put these two structures on the back. They're small dollar store foam board walls. And I just hot glued them in place too. But as you can see, I, I they're just kind of a, a smaller version of the other ones. Not one of the main structure walls. So then I use these uh, kind of like a dessert stick. It's not a, quite a popsicle stick, but a little bit smaller. 
I uh, used my little trimming tool there and, and snipped off the ends. Uh, and I used a, a exacto knife here to carve and texture into them. So a lot of these uh, wood pieces uh, don't have a lot of texture to them. And I do want to make this uh, floor texturized uh, in this building. So uh, I just uh, carved it out with a exacto knife. And I've done this in previous videos. Um, and when I went a little step further, I started to trim some of the edges just to make it look like it has a little more rustic look to uh, the wood paneling on the floor. So I just added a little bit. And you know what? I didn't do it on every piece. I just did uh, randomly picked a few pieces just to add a little more character to the to the flooring in this in this building. Probably damaged, uh, obviously, with uh, you know, all the destruction that's happening in the war here. So uh, I wouldn't be a little bit worn out. So I kind of just picked them uh, randomly. I plan on using white glue uh, to glue them in place. Uh, and uh, just uh, go on there. So this was a little challenging and time-consuming, I have to be honest. Uh, in some areas, I usually I use foam, and so it's a little easier to cut, uh, but I had to trim and cut and form fit that inside the floor. So then I added a few uh, stones to the bottom of that main post on there, just purely as a decoration, just something to break it up. And then I made these broken up brick walls in the back and added these uh, essentially match sticks and uh, stir sticks on the corners here just to kind of finish off the walls. Uh, I wanted to have wood corners. Remember there's going to be a second level on here uh, and, a, and I want to add some more details on there. So then I kind of made these broken pieces of wood on the top there like maybe the glass was shattered and somebody put some boards in there in the doorway. Uh, I had shown you I put another uh, post in there. I'm planning on putting a second floor there, and that's where the flooring is going to be sitting on, but it's going to be twisted and damaged, but I wanted to add a good base for it. So now we're going to move on to paint. Now we've done our construction on the base. We're going to go to the uh, multi-surface black paint, go to my usual brush, uh, and we're going to really zip through these early stages of painting. I've shown um, how I prime and uh, paint uh, uh, in lots of previous videos so if you've seen my previous videos you'll you'll be very familiar uh, with what techniques I use so I'm just showing you briefly I just plan on painting the entire thing black now I do I'm not gonna plan to uh, paint the entire base of this uh, of thing black yet uh, because I really haven't decorated that yet so I just did the actual structure itself as you can see I still might want to do some uh, using my dowel on that uh, bottom maybe add some brickwork or something else and some texture on there so i'm just showing you i covered everything in black uh this did take uh similar to other builds a couple of days i painted it once uh then of course i went back and got into all the spots that i've missed uh, there's a lot of different areas in here all right so then i'm just going to show you the colors that i use that's uh the real brown the bark brown um uh, the camel and the pablo so we're really actually next i use pablo and then camel so the only thing of note here is uh so these are my normal standard colors i use to prime uh, my buildings and i and this is no exception but i only use the camel on the stones uh and on the floor in the middle of the building i just use the, the bark brown and the real brown and i'm just showing you i also uh i'm doing four miniatures up at the same time and uh, I plan on coloring their bases the same uh, primer colors. So, and I added a little bit of orange to the walls, a little bit to the floor, uh, but I didn't add any uh, of the uh, camel uh, to the walls. I kind of left it to the browns uh, and then uh, just put the camel on the stonework. So I did kind of not cover everything with all four colors, um, but uh, I covered everything with the... Uh, the Pablo, the bark brown, and the real brown, and then just added the camel on the stonework, essentially. So I'm just uh, illustrating that here. I'm just showing you. And I'm just going to show you the miniatures. I did that on the base of there. Didn't add any camel on the miniatures either. I just used those three brown colors. But I just figured I might as well do them at the same time <laughs> while I'm doing the rest. All right, so now I'm going to move to a smaller uh, dry brush. So in the first one, I would have used a bigger uh, dry brush as I've done in other videos, but now I'm using it to the brickwork. So we're going to go to the desert yellow, um, the skeleton bone, uh, necrotic uh, 
um, uh, flesh, and then the uh, the mummy robe. So if you, again, if you've seen the stonework I've done, these are all familiar colors. Uh, I showed you in the same order that I'm going to put them on. Uh, and I'm not going to show you me putting them on in the video. Uh, I just uh, showed you the colors I plan on using. And I'm just going to hit all the stonework, the chimneys, around the, the, the base of the chimney, around the base of the building. So then I moved to a yellow ochre and a bark brown. And I kind of mixed these two together um, because I want to have a darker tone on my walls. I do plan on having uh, yellow walls, but I want to do a dark tone first. Uh, and then I'm going to go back with just yellow ochre and highlight it. But I'm going to put this uh, the mixture in here first. So I've hit a few areas already. I'm just showing you I'm planning on the uh, same technique as I always use. Uh, color from the middle and then kind of uh, blend out to the edges. And if you leave a little, a little dark edges, that's perfect. You want a little bit of shading. <clears throat> so you can see I kind of actually went to a bigger dry brush from... Uh, uh, the one I was using on the stonework, so I actually went to a little bit bigger. It just covers a bigger area. And and I plan on doing on the inside too. So this is a little tricky. Uh, probably in, in future builds, I probably wouldn't put as many posts in there uh, before I, I painted first. Uh, but then again, uh, the post kept everything in place when I put the black primer on. So eh, either way, probably be uh, have his own set of challenges. Uh, I chose to go this way with it. All right, so just uh, giving you one more look at uh, all of that uh, uh, yellow ochre and uh, bark brown mixture I hit on all the walls. So then I went back to the smaller dry brush, and I'm going to hit hit it with just the yellow ochre now on its own. Uh, just putting some out on that paper towel again, just so I don't have too much paint on my brush. And then I'm just going to kind of go from the center and work my uh, way out. So you're kind of putting a highlight in the wall. So that's why we put that dark tone in first, and then we're putting a lighter version of it over top. Similar to the decks of the ships that I've done, uh, this is a good way to highlight things uh, and give it real depth uh, and shadows in the corners. So I'm just showing you I'm planning on doing all the walls, all the way around, inside, outside, uh, same color. So this is the finished result, uh, and really happy how this looks out. So this is kind of what you want. You, know, the, you kind of have three tones, really. You have your dark uh, blocks and stuff underneath, and you have that uh, darker color we added on with the yellow ochre mixture with the uh, bark brown, and then we highlighted it with that uh, yellow ochre, and you got a nice uh, three-tone uh, walls. It gives it, uh, like I said, real depth. So then I'm going to go to this Necromancer cloak, which I've used before to give an aged uh, wood look. So I do plan on hitting a few different areas uh, with that on the wood. Just a note while we're painting on here, I did put uh, a doorknob on the door. I didn't mention that earlier. Uh, really, that's another just scrap piece from uh, some of those sprues from uh, the ship builds from uh, Farlock Games. Uh, I like to keep a lot of those uh, little extra sprue pieces for uh, for these very things, little projects like this. I can use it. Uh, remember, I built a lantern on the other ship, uh, and in this uh, build, I, I used it for a doorknob, actually. All right, so just going back to what I'm painting, I'm just showing you I'm hitting all the posts and all the wood, actually, on this structure. And I'm just kind of hitting uh, mainly in the center uh, and kind of the bottoms of them and pulling up. And just adding a little bit of age to look to the wood. Aged wood has a kind of a, a gray look to it. And it can be battle torn or dirty uh, from explosions and stuff. I mean, this is a, a building that's been destroyed during World War One. So. so just kind of adding an aged and damaged look to it. All right, so just going around looking at after I've added all the grays. Uh, I've added all the stonework on there. We've added all the yellow highlights on the walls. Uh, and we're getting close to the end. So now what we want to do is uh, the black kind of smoke damage. Uh, there's smoke from the chimney and the fireplace just because it would be that like that from using it. But also black from explosions and maybe fires that were in the building. Uh, so we're going to add some battle damage or through color uh, on this uh, building. 
Uh, and this is similar to uh, going back to what I did on the bridge, uh, using uh, that black onto the colors on stone uh, and uh, in these areas to give it a real good uh, damaged and weathered and aged look. So I'm going to go around in the whole building, pick uh, certain areas, especially around the fireplace, uh, around the windows, anywhere I think smoke would have gotten out of the building or explosions would have happened on the outside of the building. It just kind of add that to the whole uh, structure itself. And it's really kind of the final paint step to uh, get this uh, all done. So I do plan on putting quite a bit of black on the top of that chimney. All right, so let's take a pass through. Uh, one final look at the completed product. I got my miniatures in there. You can see I've partially completed some and some I have not done. So um, I'm working on getting those to hopefully get that all those miniatures done for the next uh, video as well. Uh, when we uh, complete the roof uh, and I want to do the basing of the uh, uh, the surroundings of the building with kind of some rubble and damaged and, and other stuff all right we'll call this first part complete uh, and we'll be moving on to the uh, the roof in the next video all right so if you guys like what we're doing here in the Plunder Den make sure you smash that like button and consider subscribing to the Plunder Den and get first-hand information when we start these kind of projects all right, everyone, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.